So now, um, if you look at this title, it's on, uh, it's on incomes, inequality, and poverty. Um, actually, just by chance, usually we think of poverty as being explained by inequality and income. And uh, Eric and uh, Ali, Ali, in the early days, in the late 90s, they actually analyzed the correlation between poverty and inequality in Africa. And in that relationship, actually, inequality and poverty are strongly positively correlated. So actually, if inequality is rising, we can expect that poverty is also rising. And if incomes are growing, also poverty is, is, going, is, is actually going down. Uh, I also I can't help noticing that um, uh, poverty also, also affects incomes and inequality. So actually analyzing that relationship is a quite a complex, ta complex task, task. But this is not what we are going to do. This is not what we are doing here. What we are doing here is uh, we are taking income, inequality, and poverty as in different aspects of well-being. And we are trying to see how they have evolved over time. Actually, over, over, over a long time, over a period of about 100 years, um, um, and this 100 years, actually from about 1900 to 2012, that's the period that we are looking at. And this period is long enough we chose it so that, that way to, per, to permit uh, identification of persistent uh, determinants of poverty and also um, to also try and see whether you can identify potential sources of structural change, which, in, which actually drive um, both the, uh, incomes, inequality, and also, also poverty. And um, in the analysis, we focus much more on the recent period for which we have more comprehensive data. And uh, just some advertisement down here. Um, in, we in depart from previous uh, literature in, in, in two respects. One, we actually use several data sets rather than just one data set. And we use uh, several methods to compute the poverty line, which is key actually in the uh, estimation of, uh, of, of poverty. We use uh, the utility consistent uh, method that we actually taught by UN Winder. There was a conference around for, for us to run that method. But we recognize that uh, money metric is not enough to measure poverty, so we also use uh, money uh, metrics. And the motivation, as, we, as I will point out later, is actually the market failure argument. If the markets are working, the only thing that we need is income. Um, so, just looking, beginning now our, our long-term uh, uh, analysis. Now there were dramatic changes in, in Kenya uh, uh, in the 20, from, during the 20th century, from the 1900, as I said, to 20, 2012. And during that time, um, there were shifts in uh, the structure of output. So the share of agriculture moved from around 75%. The share of agriculture in, in, in GDP moved from 75 around 19, uh, 19, 1900 to 25, up to the present, basically. And so there was actually, there's a structural transformation in the economy over this period, which still continues to drive incomes, income distribution, and also uh, poverty, and uh, later on I will say more about structural change. Now, so we want to focus on this period, okay, 1914 to 14, those 15 years. Um, this is actually when uh, the British uh, began to exercise their control over the Kenyan economy, and uh, during that period, the Kenyan inland was not integrated with the outside world. And actually even the, 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 the groups in Kenya also themselves at that time were not 
integrated. Um, but one thing there which we noticed is that the standard of living throughout the country in various regions are comparable. Very little differences uh, between uh, across regions. And actually, the, equilibrating, the equalizing factor was the, land, the abundance of land. Land was abundant, so everyone actually would, uh, would cultivate it and get something, uh, get, get in decent livelihood as, a, as of that time. But actually, land scarcity now is a dividing factor. So you can see the one factor now can it say can it play, uh, uh, plays different roles over different time periods. Then another event which happened during this time was the completion of the railway from Mombasa to Kisumu and Uganda. And this also had a major impact in opening up the, the countryside for settlements, both by the natives who were there at the time, the colonialists who came, and people who migrated to, uh, to come and look for new opportunities there. And this the next period, uh, this is still the same period, um, as, they, as the inland continued to be settled on, um, formal, formal sector employment emerged, and a class also of uh, traders also emerged. So there were wage earners there and also business people, and um, there, were, there, there began production of uh, cash crops, and so actually the economy began to be modernized. And at that time, some inequality now began to emerge in a noticeable which were not there before. So actually, this period was, was more or less the origin of the inequalities that we, we, see, to, uh, we see today. And actually, this is a point that we are, we are making this in this slide. Then there's this interwar period, 19, uh, uh, so, so this is, uh, yeah, this is the interwar period. Okay, and the main thing to notice here is um, that the African farmers began expanding their production, also to take opportunity of, uh, of export markets. Um, now, this is the period uh, just the, uh, up to the, the period of independence, 1963, this is when we got independence. So uh, during this period, there was uh, extensive wage employment in the country, but actually it was of a temporary nature. People would come to the urban areas, work for a short time, and then go back because of the restrictions. And there was also, also the was a beginning of rural urban migration, okay, which, also, which is also a source of structural change, uh, creating distinct rural and urban sectors in the economy. Um, so this was uh, the, the main events there. Uh, and during this period, this is now the, the first, in, the first uh, independence period, 1963 to 1976. Now, uh, during this period, there was um, the change in uh, interracial distribution of both power and incomes. So actually, uh, the incomes uh, that why the, and the assets why, that were in the hands of the, uh, the colonial settlers. Some of those assets passed into the, uh, the hands of the natives. And uh, that also served to increase the, the inequality. But uh, what happened actually during this period was a um, uh, huge increase in uh, wage employment, especially in the public sector, and uh, the public sector, the wage is there increased by 48% compared to the 6% increase in uh, the same wage in the private, pri uh, private sector. And um, here, during this period, a group of co the co poor people, the people who are, who are extremely poor, also emerged. And uh, that is still a problem, a problem today. And these people actually were characterized by having very little land to cultivate on, and also very little earnings from the off-farm employment. They are the, many of them were also landless. Uh, here, this, this uh, shows uh, the, the, 
this is around 1914. This is up to 1976. Sorry, there is some uh, there's some information missing missing here. Uh, uh, this is um, the trend in sector income share. So this is the the share of uh, wage in total incomes. As you can see, it rose. This is uh, more or less a time of, of independent, independence. Rose and then declined. And then this is now the agricultural, the share of agricultural sector in, in, in total GDP, in total income, actually declined substantially. And uh, this is the share of profits. Okay, also rose and then declined. And this, this, these trends have implications for, for poverty and, and income distribution. And uh, this is the, the share of income by race. This is the share of uh, total income by the, the African population. Actually, you can see it's, very, it's, it's the highest, okay, because they were the majority also. That's the reason. And uh, this other group here, this is European, not very different for the, from the Asian. Um, so, in terms of the, the evolution of poverty and income, in income from the 1900 to 1976, what we find is uh, inequality actually increased until the 1950s, then, then fluctuated. And uh, we see it from here, this Gini, Gini coefficient. This is for, this, for everyone. This one here actually increased, then kind of fell also still, is, uh, still high that the inequality and then this is uh, yeah this is for and then this is now for the inequality in the modern sector it was the highest simply because uh, partly because of the way we measured we measured it using uh, uh, income from the former sector okay and um, the, the the inequality among the the Europeans was actually the, the lowest and but also also actually for some reason it fell after independence. Around this period you can see it fell from uh, from here. And this is as an, uh, uh, an important graph for, for us. This is the evolution of, of uh, poverty. Okay, over this this period from 19, 1900 to around 1976. This is uh, there was no FGT at this time actually. The method, this method, FGT methodology uh, discovered by Eric and not discovered this method the at the time, but because uh, there was the end count ratio which was there. So this is the same index, which is uh, modified by the inequality among the poor. So uh, the point to note here is that um, actually poverty has been quite a problem in the country for quite some time. Okay, and then after this, it's stab it stabilized. 1976, if we can use the data sets for 1982, say 1980s, 1990s, and so on, this would just be around there, okay? So, uh, actually around, say around the 40 there, but it has come down, but it's not as, as, as serious as it was before. Right now, we think we have a lot of poverty, but poverty used to be much, a bigger problem previously than now. And uh, this is a more recent period, and we are trying to see uh, uh, things that might actually be in driving the, the incomes, the incomes, uh, um, the incomes that we, we, we measure. Now, uh, this is one factor in driving that income. This is uh, the the, um, the, the capital labor ratio, capital labor ratio is this one, which is rose and then declined. And this one, and this one here is, uh, yes, th this is not the, the land, the land labor ratio, land per, land per person declining very sharply actually. Okay, and this is also uh, one explanation, one factor explaining poverty. And um, uh, this other one is uh, the capital labor ratio. 
the, cap, uh, the capital land ratio actually. So capital has been, been accumulating faster than land. Of course, the land doesn't grow, so, but the capital has been growing, so that's why you have that relationship there. But because of this, this uh, pattern here, this one here, okay, you can see the return to land is actually very large. Okay, so no wonder people, people are actually, land is an issue in Kenya now because of, it has become very short and very scarce, and there is a high return on land. Then for GDP for a more recent period, uh, here this, this line here is the, the labor land ratio, person per, persons per, per, per land actually, this has been rising. But you see the slope here is very, it's very slow, but actually if you look at the, over the long period, the other picture, I don't, because I don't have much time, I won't go back. You see, um, actually the problem is more serious than we see. And um, uh, this is the labor income shares. These have fair, been fairly constant, actually, between the, the, the share between labor and, um, and the other factors of production. Okay, very uh, not changing much over this recent period. And um, so we have monetary measures of poverty, okay, which, which we look at, and these are insufficient health, poor health, nutrition, illiteracy. Actually, Andre uh, gave us an idea about this. Uh, uh, insecurity, low self-esteem, and powerlessness. These are other measures of, of well-being. That, and we have, uh, what we notice is health status in Kenya has been improving. If we look at, if we use uh, mortality, but if you use uh, life expectancy, it's actually uneven, okay? But this is, this one uh, is fast moving indicator. This is slow moving indicator. And um, uh, so we want to say something about policy with the results that we have. Uh, so in Kenya, the aim of our government now is to reduce uh, a policy that have a, uh, to reduce poverty, okay? So we actually, and this uh, policy will succeed if certain things happen, if certain objectives are, are achieved. One is even growth actually occurs, okay? But in growth in itself will not actually reduce poverty. It needs to be, the process needs to be inclusive. And they showed us a, an example where Kenya actually grew reasonably well, but poverty did not change much, did not fall much. And uh, we also need to change our political governance systems and reduce poverty and increase efficiency in the use of the resources that, that we have. The other thing that comes out from our long-term analysis is regional, regional inequality. If we reduce inequality across regions, actually we reduce overall inequality. Okay, so if we can focus on this thing here, our analysis, these two are very closely linked. Um, and the issue now is how to transform, to do this we need to transform our economy. And this is why we ask actually what do we mean by this structural change that we want. And I've tried to think about it and in my mind as to what structural change is, keeps on changing. So, so, so what are the measures of structural change? Factor proportions, like capital labor issue. Okay, if that we see that changing, then there's a, uh, uh, there's, a there's a structural change. And also, the other thing is uh, the change in the age composition of the population. Okay, now, but and what might be the changes, in which, what factors might cause uh, propo the factor proportions change? T technical knowledge, okay, norms. Actually, for me, these technical knowledge, norms and institutions, and the mechanisms for social sh sharing. Th these are the issues, of, these, are, these are the structural changes. Okay, and um, if we can figure out how to change the norms, how to increase our technical knowledge, how to change our sharing, because this will affect inequality, then we can actually change both uh, uh, inequality and poverty the, the way we want. 
Uh, okay, so my time is up. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.